Breaking normal, a radical recontextualization of authentic communication. Everything we do, we do for the glory of God. Why did Adam and Eve get kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Maybe for the same reason we did, listening to the serpent rather than God. Now, unless you're a parcel mouth, it is rarely an actual serpent. It's a shiny item in a storefront, a commercial on TV, a celebrity, a book, a friend, a parent, coach, or teacher. All of these are potential serpents and they whisper to you the things you should be doing or the things you should believe or how you should look and behave. Everywhere you go, you're being shoulded on. When you listen to them and start believing them, you're shooting on yourself. And that, my friends, is how we get ourselves banished from the garden. That's how a heavenly life can become a living hell. All of these are potential serpents. If the original sin was that we ate the fruit of the forbidden tree, then from there it seems as many continue to go against God within by covering themselves up and shutting themselves down. They began to live in shame and separation from our source, worshiping what other people think rather than honoring and loving who and what they truly are. What I'm saying is that there's a way back in and it starts with telling the truth, getting out of your head and into your heart, taking off the fig leaves, so to speak. I don't believe in luck and I don't believe in accidents. I think everything that happens, happens for a reason and that sometimes the reason is beyond our initial rational understanding, hence our calling it lucky or accidental. I've also heard that in some religions it is blasphemous, even sinful to use words like luck, coincidence or accidents because it implies a lack of faith and the unity of God's creation. This idea makes a lot of sense to me, except for one thing. I'm not sure if I believe in sin the same way you do. I say that because we are all creations of the Creator, endowed with the divine and universal energy. The light that is within me is the same light that is within you, within everyone and everything. We are as individual light bulbs connected back to a common source, and yet no two bulbs are exactly the same. We come in different colors, sizes, and shapes with different perspectives, ideas, and dreams. Those variables make the light shine through us in a very particular way. And it wants to shine through us in that very particular way. That's why we're here. Our job as light bulbs is to shine. So when there is sin, it's this, to dim your light. Or in other words, a lack of acceptance and expression of God that wants to shine through you. Some see it as missing the mark, darkness, and even evil. I've seen it that way as well. I also see sin as the Spanish do. Seen, without. Without what? Without the infinitely intelligent divine light that so clearly wants to shine through us. And I've seen that light blocked. And there's only one person that can block that light, and that's you. My dad has always told me that when you have a problem, you're the problem. After taking a year off from school when graduating pre-med from Emory University in Georgia, that year off has now turned into almost a full decade of what I call the school of life. Getting paid to do the things I would pay to do. And gallivanting the globe, hosting retreats, events, and a variety of gatherings in some of the remote paradises on earth on the idea of radical, radical health through raw honesty and self-acceptance through self-expression. And I finally learned that there actually maybe are, there are no problems, only opportunities for growth, expansion, and evolution of our souls. I personally believe the ultimate gift was given when Yeshua, also known as Jesus Christ, not only laid down his life sacrificially, but unconditionally loved those who disagreed with him the most by forgiving and approving his crucifiers as they nailed him to the cross, which now serves as the symbol to bridge any gap we've created to separate us from God's love and light available as our birthright. This book 
is my gift and personal invite to you to love unconditionally beyond agreement-based connections. Break normal and build real relationships. Join me on a lifelong vacation founded and funded on the fun comfortability of pursuing your passion, shining your universal yet unique divine light, and giving your God-given gifts to those who would benefit from it the most. Let's break normal. That was some of the book I've been working on. Thank you for making it this far in the video. I'm imagining this message is resonating deeply with you because it resonated deeply within a lot of some of the most inspirational people that I've ever met. It's basically a distillation and refinement and upgraded way to pass this message along to the masses. I am inviting 100 people to pre-order my book and have a mastermind session about the more controversial, divisive, or unclear topics because I want to get to see how many people can write one book rather than how many books one person can write. I've had this idea from the beginning. I've actually partnered with a not-so-ghost writer. I'll tell you more about it, but if you're interested in uh, investing in yourself through me, that's how we say it as salesmen these days, email me at tinallin at gmail.com. Let's pre-order my book and let's uh, read it and let's have a book club for Breaking Normal. Tinallin at gmail.com, subject Breaking Normal. Thank you for being you. The women are strong, the women are strong, the women are strong, and the women are strong, the women are strong, the women are strong. Junk.